Let's think, think a little bit more about the aggregate level, um, about what the future might hold for using learning analytics beyond the level of the individual organization. One of the things that higher education systems throughout the world are finding difficult to come to terms with is to move with more sophisticated measures of what constitutes value that education adds. At the moment, we're stuck with quite unilinear indicators like league tables uh, or the teaching excellence framework, for example, with single indicators such as employability that try and compare a very complex and diverse system. What learning analytics holds for the future here is the ability to make much more sophisticated comparisons. One of the things that can happen when you've got an effective uh, learning records warehouse or store, for example, is that you can go back to the principle of de-identification and you can create anonymized benchmark sets that allow us to compare universities of similar type with each other to see if we really can establish what learning gain looks like um, across education. Now these are emerging areas, they're not in place yet. But as we collect more and more information from learning analytics and better understand how to use it, and as we deepen our appreciation of the principled ethical way of using this information in education, we have the prospect in front of us of being able to make far more informed and meaningful comparisons across the full diversity of our higher education systems that really get a, an improvement in our organization and our ability to deliver at a national level in this critical area. A starting principle uh, in the use of any data that we might use in learning analytics is that data is owned by the individual. Every individual owns their data, they have a right to privacy, uh, and they should only release it once they have given some form of informed consent or its equivalent that allows that data to be, to be used more publicly. But of course, if we had a situation where every student in every university exercised their right to privacy, we wouldn't have any learning analytics because we couldn't analyze and we couldn't compare. So first of all, we need to get into a situation where people are prepared to allow their data to be used. And secondly, to avoid a situation where individuals can unreasonably withhold their data and by doing so, do damage to society as a whole. And the key to dealing with this is always consult. We always need to consult the different affected groups about learning analytics to understand their concerns and their needs. So firstly, of course, we need to consult with students. And one of the things that we did in JISC right from the start of this project was to work very closely with the National Union of Students to take on board their ethical concerns about the collection of data. So we need to talk to students about what we're collecting, why we're collecting it, what constraints we're putting in place, even when the information is identifiable, how we will guarantee that we will act responsibly for that data, how we won't abuse our power that we have simply by holding information about people. In that, of course, uh, we have a common set of constraints as any other organization. Your bank uh, should be dealing with your financial institution in information with exactly the same uh, level of consideration. When we turn to other groups, for instance, uh, educators, teachers, we have to consult in different ways. We have to understand their concerns and their interests in their data. Uh, we need to understand what they need to know. We need to understand the pressures on them. Uh, we need to respect their privacy uh, as educators in the information that we collect. We need to speak to their professional concerns. So clearly we must talk to teachers about the way that learning analytics data is going to be used. And again, when we talk to institutions, we need to respect institutional privacy. So institutions own their own data. They have legal responsibilities in terms of data protection. They can't easily let a third party organization have identifiable data if there is a risk that they will violate data protection legislation. So institutional lawyers have to be cons uh, con consulted on how far institutions are going to go uh, and what sort of protections that they have. But similarly, institutions are protective of their data for competitive purposes. Increasingly, our educational institutions compete uh, in quite an aggressive market to attract students. 
To what extent is information confidential for marketing purposes? How much is going to be released? If we de-identify at an institution level, can we be sure that that information is not going to be publicly available uh, to the level of identifying which university is supplying it? And this again means consulting with a different category of people. We also need to consult with government in the way that government will use information out uh, of universities and colleges. They also must respect uh, the, respect the institu institutional privileges of confidentiality and individual rights over their data. So the key thread through all of this is consultation. Always talk to people about how we're going to use the data, always tell them what we're doing, always situate this within ethical principles and legal levels of responsibility.